Hey everyone, how's it going? Let's talk today about a brand new band called Howling Sycamore with their first album, a uh, self-titled, also called Howling Sycamore. This is a super group of sorts. Every member of this band has been in bands before. They are from San Francisco, California. And let me tell you, their debut album is coming out of the gate, letting everybody know, hey, we're here and uh, we're good. So normally at the beginning of these reviews, I like to tell you kind of what the subgenre is that the band likes to play in, but that's kind of a difficult task here because there's a lot of things going on with this band. Um, progressive, I guess, would be the right word, but that doesn't really do it justice. Also, progressive metal is not really a good description. That could be literally anything from dream theater to atheist to, you know, it, progressive goes all over the place. Devin Townsend, it's not a very descriptive word, but it is true in this case. But to give you a better idea, their songwriting has lots of black metal elements to it. They play lots of uh, fast uh, blast beat sounding um, drum patterns, which can also work for death metal. But the guitar uh, riffs and patterns and everything that they use is very reminiscent of black metal. Lots of uh, atmosphere uh, setting, riffs and sounds that you would normally hear in black metal. Well, the singer really prefers a more like traditional heavy metal style. So right there, you've got a couple different styles going on. Not the most like outrageously original thing ever. You know, people make styles all the time, but what really gets you going right here that you're gonna notice, is they had a guest musician come in to play a baritone uh, saxophone on the first three songs of this album. And man, they mix it in there well. And it's so, it's, it, it's odd. Like it, it really is odd, but it works so well. It uh, clicks really well with the band. I thought this was a fantastic uh, addition to these first couple of songs. It could have could have gone over not so well. You can see something like that not going over well and you're just thinking, what the fuck is this? This doesn't, that fit in well at all. We're a metal band. Not that uh, horned instruments or anything like that is new to metal, but you see what I mean when they take in all these different styles and they try to put them together. It can be a recipe for disaster. Not in this case. They bent, they pulled it off very well, and I really enjoyed these first three tracks that had saxophone. You get to the track called Chant of Stillness, and the band has realized that it's important to have tempo changes on an album to keep things interesting. This song is slower than the other songs and has no drums in it, which sounds like an odd thing to do, but it makes for a nice change of pace on the album. This is a uh, one of the more unique sounding songs on the album, which actually can be kind of hard to say that this song might be unique, more unique than the others. Because what one thing I really love about this album is all of these songs have their own identity. You really, after maybe a listen or two, you're like, you know uh, the songs from one another. It doesn't take a lot of listens to really figure out which song is which because all of the songs really do have their own identity. That being said, this is the only track on the album that does not have drums. So that is one way that it sets itself apart from the rest of the songs. Let's talk about a couple of things real quick that I didn't particularly enjoy about the album. I really, really do enjoy the vocals. Let me preface by saying I did thoroughly enjoy the vocals. With that being said, there's a couple of times on the album where I feel like the singer is trying to go for notes that he just, just doesn't quite really hit very well. Funny, my voice cracked when I was trying to say that. He, <clears throat> it, it doesn't really do a lot to bring the album down, but you do notice it. You do hear that like, okay, maybe you're not, you're not quite there. But like I said, it doesn't bring it down too terribly. You know, I still really enjoyed this album and I still really like the vocals. I'm excited to hear what's coming next and there will be things coming next because uh, from what I've heard, this band has a three album deal with Prosthetic Records. So we should be hearing some more stuff from them here in the next few years to come, which I'm really excited for because I really did thoroughly enjoy this album. And one other thing I didn't particularly care for, there's a track in the middle of this album 
that's not really a song. It's just a little uh, interlude or what have you. I'm not really a fan of those. It's really hard for me to be impressed uh, with those or really feel like it uh, fits with the album and helps with the flow of things instead of hurting. I feel most more often than not when bands try to do uh, a little interlude tracks like this, like it's like a minute long. It just kind of takes you away from the experience more than it really helps. I feel like something like Chant of Stillness does a better job at that, where you, you get to a song that does a good job of changing the pace up and changing the feel of the album for just one track, and then you can go back to what the band is comfortable doing and writing more good songs like that. But when they try to do something like this where it just really takes you out of the feel of the album and it's just like a minute long of not anything that great. I don't really enjoy that. And then the outro as well felt a little bit pointless. I didn't really enjoy that. It's just, it's a little instrumental uh, piece that they have at the end of the album. It's like three or four minutes long. I uh, really honestly could have just done without that and not had it on the album at all or shortened it quite a bit and just uh, put it onto the end of the last track. I felt that would have been, something like that would have been better than what they did because like if you're listening to it on a CD, because people totally still do that, you're not going to like stick around for the outro. You're gonna take the CD out. If you're streaming the album, you're not gonna ever go to this track. You're not gonna let it play if it comes on and if, you know, if you're listening to it on vinyl or what have you, you're not going to listen to this. It just feels pointless to have it on there. So I uh, don't like when bands do stuff like this. Maybe other people do, but I don't particularly enjoy it. That being said, take the album as a whole. It's kind of uh, short, but not really short in track listing, but not really short in material. There's more than 30 minutes of material on here to enjoy, not including that outro or that interlude I was talking about in the in the middle. So there is still a good amount of material. All of the actual songs on the album, I think there's six or seven, are at least uh, typically like five minutes or maybe even a little bit longer. They, they're all around like the five minute range. So all of the songs do have plenty of material to get into. They're not, you know, two, three minute tracks. They are full fledged. Uh, leaning towards longer songs. Not not really long, I would say. You know, I don't think any of them really push past like seven minutes. They're not really long songs. They're just like a little above medium length. And that works. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that they didn't do anything too long here on their, their first go around on this first album because that can sometimes be a recipe for disaster as well where bands try to do too much in one song on their first album. They try to hit all the good things, you know, they try to do the long song, they try to do uh, everything, you know, all at once on the first album, and they end up failing in a couple of things. Well, maybe on the next album, once the band has really, really honed in their songwriting, they can attempt one of a longer, you know, maybe eight minute plus track. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Like I said, lots and lots of good songwriting, lots of different elements coming together to make for some very interesting and unique songs. Little things detracting from the album that, you know, keep it from really reaching into that next level of like nine and above, you know, nine and a half, reaching towards the perfect album. Not quite there yet but a damn good job for their first album, and I can't wait to see what's next from Howling Sycamore. So, I encourage you guys to listen to this because I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, if you do listen to it, I wanna know what you think in the comments. Please comment and do all that kind of stuff that you do on YouTube, and you should subscribe. And I'm not just telling you that for my benefit, I'm telling you for your benefit. You're really gonna enjoy how many uh, different albums I'm gonna tell you about. If you stick around on the channel, and if you follow the Facebook or Twitter account, whichever kind of social media you prefer, plenty of albums to get to, guys, and I'm gonna be covering them, as many of them as I can get to. 
So, all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.